not into politics. Not into politics. Are you serious right now? This is your life. What happens in politics directly translates into your daily existence. It affects us all. It affects me. It affects Miranda. And you, my dear naive caller, it affects you too. He hung up. I mean, was that too harsh? Sorry. It, it just blows my mind. Some people manage to live in a bubble for years and years, and then, come election time, what will they do? Of course they'll stay home, glued to their couches, watching Charlie's Angels while downing seven beers. I mean, fuck, maybe it is pointless. We're all gonna die anyway. No, I'm fine, Miranda. You leave your car for a minute to pay for gas, and when you return, there's something behind the windshield wiper. It's a small note that says, Hi, Jackalope. I'm a friend. What the hell? You look around and suddenly get the feeling you're being watched, but you see nothing out of the ordinary. No one seems to pay any special attention to you. People just carry on with their activities. This can't be good, can it? The man standing across the road is completely motionless and doesn't even flinch as you approach. It's a bizarre scene. Both he and his buffalo companion stare at you without a word. Then, you hear his deep, breathy voice. He says the weather's nice today. The fuck's wrong with him? He pulls something out of his satchel and presents you with two small wooden figurines. You have to ask yourself, what do you value most in life? Is it the people? or peace and solitude. Choose wisely. Townsfolk say it's an unnatural way of living. They, on the other hand, feel wrongfully judged. Why can't everyone just leave them be? You could just keep on driving, but looking out the window you see this woman staring at you. Are all these kids hers? She approaches the fence, eyes wild. Why do you keep harassing these poor children, she screams. But it sounds fake. When she gets closer, her demeanor changes. She takes out a thick envelope from her dress pocket. Could you? Please? She nods at the mailbox.
People crave attention so desperately, your greatest fear is to be overlooked, unrecognized, forgotten. You feel so special when your name pops up on the radio or on the news, as if that one silly moment of accidental stardom could make you immortal. The truth is, though, you are nothing, mean nothing. All those moments of fake greatness don't mean shit. No matter how many times Jordan Colin Leonard mentions you on air, no matter how many times you get roasted by Steve Landry, no matter how much attention you get from Mariah's little Riley, you'll always be just a footnote.
You need fuel, but this is ridiculous. You can't afford to wait for hours on end. Gotta find the gas someplace else. Slam! I've had enough with your damn rations. I'm stopping at every gas station as it is. No chance I'll make it to the next one. Sir, it's government policy. There's no middle ground here. Whose side are you on? The truck driver's right. It ain't fair. These people barely make it on time. to be tough, but in reality, she's one small push away from falling apart. I'll pay her a visit when I'm done with you. I will take something from her, something insignificant yet dear to her, and then I'll wait. I love waiting. The waiting part is delightful. She'll panic. She'll come to me desperately looking for the missing rage that drives her now, and I will listen to her like her parents never did. I I will make her feel wanted, loved even. She will be mine. An old pickup parked on the roadside and the driver leaning on it have both seen better days. At first sight, you can see that they're waiting far too long for a Samaritan that'll help them with some gasoline. If you share with this poor bastard, there's a risk you'll soon find yourself in the same position. Thank you. 
gonna win over the interstate jackalope's supposedly single heart. Well, me. Boo! Last round, it's your 15th anniversary. What do you get the jackalope? First contestant, GG, go! Uh, road safety training. You've been married for 15 years, GG. Why the fuck would she need that? Afterwards, I'd keep her the ride of her lifetime. Ugh. Gross. Also, it makes zero sense. Amy, go! I'd <laughs> give her a ten-foot-tall white rabbit. Then, the three of us would go on a hot air balloon flight. Uh, try hurting much? My turn. We go on a killing spree. Obliterate everyone who's ever crossed us. Right before they get us, we swallow cyanide pills and die. Eesh. Ah, uh, creepy. You almost run over an old drunk, so, to avoid tragedy, you sit him down at a nearby bus stop. It draws a cop's attention. He's about to recognize you, but the drunk won't let you go. I'll distract him. Just get me a drink, please. Damn it. You drop the drunk off at the shelter. The cop's on your tail. Close enough to arrest him, you won't. 
escape now. Step aside, boys. That's close enough to arrest him. He won't escape now. We are close enough. Time to arrest the perp. like a right maniac to me. The Guinness Wrecker kind. Faster than a lightning bolt was what Bernie said on his CB. But now? Turns out it was all horseshit. The Jackalope can't even win a civil street race. Just found out he lost, and not even against some pro racer. And what this means, folks, is that he ain't no road monster. Ain't no demon from outer space. He's probably some middle-aged loser named Dave with a mortgage and a bald spot worse than mine. Here you are, a loser. The realization of your failure is so crushing it literally hurts. Your heart bursts in your chest. 
Each breath is harder than the last. Your field of vision narrows quickly. You're drenched in ice-cold sweat. You feel... wrong. You know you're losing control of your body. You need to fight, but you're just too tired. To vanish, that's all you want. But then, there's that faint memory breaking through the murk of despair. Distant shapes, sounds, voices. You have to try again. You won't give up. Not just yet.